Hello there friends and welcome. Today we have another very special racial archetype build, a halfling cavalier of the paw all focused on mounted combat for extreme damage, while aided by your trusty wolf companion who can easily tank for you by achieving higher than 100 effective armor class during combat, and of course also tripping on every hit, so you can easily destroy foes. Don't underestimate this tiny demonic overlord, because his damage is truly out of this world. Thanks to the Demon Mythic Path, we are able to achieve extreme damage by combining powerful aspects like Kalavakus and Shear to further empower our charging attacks, especially when aided by the Cavalier's Mighty Charge special ability. While it is true that you can also go with Trickster, I have so many Trickster builds already that I wanted to do another demon, especially considering all the synergy we have with mounted characters. So without further ado, let us get started on our Cavalier of the Paw Ratio Archetype build. So the Cavalier of the Paw is actually one of the strongest Cavalier archetypes, but it actually has a lot of unique synergies with the Halfling race. You have two downsides. First, you are limited in your animal companion selection to just the dog and the wolf, which honestly, if you've watched some of my other videos and you already know they are the best pets anyways, so this is more of a benefit than a downside. Lastly, you can pick a Cavalier Order, some of them have some interesting abilities. But what you gain as a Cavalier of the Paw more than compensates for it. You still retain your Cavalier's challenge, which is very useful, but whenever you issue a challenge, your amount will also gain a plus one dodge bonus to armor class, which is great because dodge always stacks with everything. That increases for every four levels you possess. This makes for a very tanky pet mount and will ensure your actual cavalier remains safe at all times. At level two, cavaliers of the paw also gain the danger ward special ability. As a standard action, you can buff your whole party so that for the next whole minute, whenever they fail a saving throw, they can re-roll it with a plus 4 competence bonus. The fact that you have to accept a roll even if it is worse doesn't really matter because this works on a failed saving throw, right? So we would have failed the save anyways. <laughs> Lastly, at level 15, they gain their most powerful ability, Giant Slayer. If the target of your challenge is at least large size and you hit them with a melee attack, you'll get a very powerful bonus to damage rolls equal to half your class levels, which is even multiplied on a critical hit. You still retain bonus feats, as a Cavalier, there's three of them and also three extra feats that can only be chosen as teamwork ones. So overall this is very solid and while I'd say it's not as versatile as Gandharmi, it's still extremely powerful. Of course we have to pick Halfling instead of Human for once. As far as your racial heritage, I would pick Hasty. You'll gain a plus two bonus to initiative which is always welcome and as far as losing sure-footed and fearless, it doesn't really matter. For background, the usual. Street Urchin and Pickpocket, especially since we already have a plus shoot to initiative from the Hasty Heritage ability. Now when it comes to your ability points allocation, my preferred pick for your main attribute is actually Strength. Yes, I know Halflings have a penalty to Strength and you can only start with 16 instead of 19, but look, you can still achieve more than 50 Strength with your Halfling. That's more than enough for everything. The reason I don't like maximizing dexterity is because this will force you into picking not only weapon finesse, but also mythic weapon finesse. To me, they are not only wasteful feats, but picking these will also delay both your normal and mythic feat progression by a lot. And as usual, I prefer to have builds that are powerful, even at the early levels. I would leave strength at 16, which is the maximum. To level ups, you can increase this up to plus 5, which will leave you with an odd score of 21. This is actually fine because later on we can add a plus 7 to it from our major demonic aspect as should truly turn it into an even score. The same for constitution, 15 is enough. Charisma is actually useless for us. Besides that, I recommend you dump wisdom only so you can start with 16 dexterity. But you can also dump intelligence instead. So we can have 3 skill points, which will go into athletics, mobility which has pretty nice synergy with mounted combat, and lastly I would pick stealth if only because we have both a size and also a background bonus to it, and only so our character can actually do something when our party is camping or resting, since athletics and mobility don't really work there. As far as your level 1 feat, because we are going with strength, we don't need to bother with weapon finesse, which is a massive boom for early game power. What you absolutely want is mounted combat. This feat can help a lot early game by potentially letting your dog or wolf avoid a melee hit, if you pass a mobility check resulting in greater than the opponent's attack rolls. As for your bonus tactician feat, 
Unfortunately, we can't pick out flank so early. Ideally, you would go with either coordinated maneuvers or shake it off. Because of the tactician ability you get for free as a cavalier, you can actually share these teamwork feats with your party members, even multiple ones at the same time, although they will cost another use. Perfect for pre-buffing before battle because your allies will retain the use of it, for 3 rounds plus 1 round for every 2 levels of Cavalier, you don't want to waste an action in battle doing this, just do it before. So there's two ways this can go. Coordinating maneuvers is because, well, your pets automatically trip on hit, which will be enhanced by this, meaning they have higher chance of tripping. Or shake it off if you want to increase the saving throw of all of your allies instead. Depending on how many pets you have, coordinated maneuvers might be better, Otherwise, I would go with Shake It Off because, you know, it affects your entire party. Coordinated maneuvers will only help your tripping pets. Then choose either the dog or the wolf. The wolf has a little bit started dexterity, which means just one more armor class and also higher speed. I would personally go with the wolf for this build. But you know, the dog is just fine as well. As far as deity, since we are going with demon, any deity that allows evil alignments, or at least chaotic neutral. I like choosing Gorum, which is a god of battle, and then you can go with chaotic evil or neutral. For our level 3 feat, this is very important. You absolutely want Spirit at Charge. This can highly increase the damage you deal, as whenever you charge at the enemy, you deal double damage with melee weapons. Ideally, for the early game, you can truly go with any martial weapon, but weapons that have the highest base damage, like great swords. You don't have to rely on rich weapons, since you can ride your pet as early as level 1. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you're going to increase on all of the levels after. For our level 5 feat, I would pick combat reflexes. We have high starting dexterity, which means a lot of extra attacks of opportunity, plus our pets automatically trip the enemies anyways. And if the enemies try to get up, assuming they don't outright die, they will eat an attack of opportunity. At level 6, as a bonus feat, I would pick power attack. Yes, you can already pick out flank now, but you know, for me, most of my party members, including pets, can only acquire out flank at level 7, which is why I delay it for 7. After all, this is a teamwork feat, it won't work if only your cavalier has it. Meanwhile, for power attack, at this point you already have enough attack bonuses to overcome the penalty, especially since you know once again your pet trips and knockdown enemies have a minus 4 penalty to AC against melee attacks. For level 7, as I said before, outflank as usual. At this point, our wolf can also get it even better for us. At level 8 to get a bonus combat feat, I would personally pick Indomitable Mount. It can help a lot. Once per round, whenever your mount fails a saving throw, you can make a mobility check, and if the result is higher than the DC, the save will be successful instead. Because it is once per round and we do have high mobility, overall it's a very nice choice. At level 9, I would pick Improve at Critical, and then Great Axe for the super overpowered Grave Singer Great Axe as usual. At this point, more like at level 10, you'll already be at chapter 3, which means you can pick the Grave Singer just fine. Now I know you might ask why not go with Lances, as Cavaliers do have a special ability that enhances Lances, and the Fabled Hero Lance enhances charge even further. Well, the reason is simple, you know, Supreme Charge only comes at level 20. <laughs> the same for the Fabled Hero's Lance, it is only at the end of chapter 5. That takes forever to get, to put it simply. Would you rather have your character wait until the very end game with a weapon type that's garbage overall? Or have something super powerful as early as level 9? The choice is quite simple to me. For another teamwork feat, well, you can go with Elite Spellcaster at this point, if you have a party with a lot of spellcasters, but you know you can also go with coordinated maneuvers here, depending on how many pets you have. So for your level 11 and 13 feet, you actually have two choices. You can now get started on the Shatter Defenses package, which means Weapon Focus, then Dazzling Display, and then I would personally delay Shatter Defenses for level 15, because unless you have a character spamming Dazzling Display, 15 is when your casters get Frightful Aspect, which automatically shakes the enemies anyways to proc Shatter Defenses with complete ease. But besides that, you can also go for the Cleaving Finish line, so Cleave at level 11 and then Cleaving Finish at level 13. And Cleaving Finish actually does have very high synergy with your mounted charge attacks when enhanced with Aspect of the Kalavakus, a demon ability that I will show you later on. I would rather get started into the Shatter Defenses package, so for now, Weapon Focus and Great Axe. At this level we also get Mighty Charge, which is simply amazing. Thanks to the free bull rush and trip combat maneuver attempts on a charge. Then at level 12 as a bonus feat, pick Dazzling Display. So for level 13, I would pick Cleave. It's kind of a dead feat, but you know we need it for Cleaving Finish. 
and as I said it has pretty high synergy with mounted attacks. Then for level 15, Shatter Defenses at last, as by now your casters like Clerics can already cast the Frightful Aspect spell. At 17, Cleaving Finish, we do get it somewhat late, but we are somewhat on a tight feat selection. As for another Tactician feat, might as well pick Elid Spellcaster. For your level 18 feat, well, we have pretty much run out out of the most important feats to pick at this moment. I'd say you have two choices, you might as well go for Great Cleave and after that improve at Cleaving Finish, since we do such high damage on a single attack anyways. Or you can pick Improved Initiative here, and then at level 19, Blind Fight. As I don't think we really need Improved Cleaving Finish, I'll go for Improved Initiative, just in time for the Chapter 5 battles. Then at level 19, Blind Fight. The main reason is that there are some annoying enemies that we fight now, most notably the final boss, that have consumed sources that cannot be bypassed by the true scene buff, so Blind Fight will help against them. Alright, so now let's get into our mythic progression for our Cavalier of the Paw Demon, Halfling. Close to the Abyss is by far the best, I mean we are going Demon, and the extra gore attack is always fun. As far as our first mythic ability, if you are on Unfair, then you might consider Last Stand, but you know you can just rely on your pet to tank for you instead when riding it. I'd much rather pick Leading Strike, this has a lot of synergy with mounted builds, because since basically when riding your pet, both you and your pet share the same spot, it's very easy to get fast attacks coming from both you and the pet at the same time, which means a lot of procs of leading strike, plus it also scales quite wonderfully with each mythic rank. For mythic level 2, I don't think you would already have the normal improved critical here, so what I would pick is mythic power attack instead. As for mythic level 3, definitely ever ready. At this point you are very close to getting the super OP grave singer great axe, which means lots of attacks, lots of attacks of opportunity, highly boosted by ever ready. As for Mythic level 4, as usual, Mythic Improved Critical and Great X. Then you can also get to pick your first Demonic Aspect. Please remember that I already have a complete and full Demon Mythic Path Guide, you can check to the side here or in the description, where I cover each one of these in depth. So for now I'll keep it simpler. Calavacus is of course your best choice. This is basically one of the Demon abilities that truly makes Demon Cavaliers or Mounted characters so powerful. The synergy it has with Cavalier and Charge is out of this world. Especially because at this point, you already have the Mighty Charge ability, which enhances the number of free attacks you get from this, but even higher. For Mythic level 5, if you have a Scald to provide Pounce for you, then definitely Mythic Charge, after all we are a build mostly about charging. Without Pounce, Charge isn't as useful, unfortunately, because you are limited to just a single charge action. With Pounce you can both charge, and then retain all of your attacks at the same round. I always go with Scald, so I'll be picking Mythic Charge, and we are a charge build. Then go with Aspect of Sheer, because Sheer, whenever you are raging, grants you the powerful charge ability, which will increase your weapon damage dice by a nice amount. For your first two demonic aspects, Baylor and then Vavakia. So the stat bonus you get, right, the first part of each aspect, is always in effect, however, as far as the second part, you have to pick only one. Vavakia you want just for the permanent bonus to strength, Meanwhile, Baylor is for the actual activated ability, since it lets every single one of your allies gain your demonic rage bonus whenever you rage. This is just for the normal rage bonus, but it's still quite a lot of bonuses to attack rolls, damage rolls, even caster levels in DC, and overall there is nothing quite as efficient as the aspect of Baylor for the major aspect, because you know, it affects your entire party. For mythic level 6, I would pick Destiny Beyond Birth. As you remove our ratio penalty to strength from being a halfling, it's just plus 2 to strength, but you know it helps, especially as our other mythic feat selection at this point isn't that helpful. Then be sure to go with the aspect of Incubus for another minor aspect. Just be aware that you can only apply 3 minor aspects at once at mythic rank 8. So until then, just keep Kalavakus and Sheer applied. Now for mythic level 7, I'd pick Mythical Beast. Our pet is a big part of our build strength, and at this point, it can already get quite a lot of nice boosts to stats from this. For another major aspect, I'd go with Shadow Demon just for the permanent bonus to Wisdom. The other minor demonic aspects are kinda worthless for us, besides a few skill points, so you might as well go with Succubus now, as the Succubus aura can be somewhat useful. For Mythic level 8, you should definitely be level 18 by now, which means you can pick Mythic Improved Initiative, just in time for the Chapter 5 Demon Lord battles, 
to ensure you act first. Then Nabasu here can work. For Mythic level 9, honestly at this point you kinda already have everything you want. You might as well go for last stands just in case. Especially if you plan on playing the first DLC Inevitable Excess, as the enemies there can be quite tough. On unfair at least. And go with Babao here. Now when it comes to your Demon Lord aspects, Nocticula is by far the best to me, because the ability to apply all of your rage bonuses, including minor and major aspects, to an ally of choice as a free action, which means it's instantly activated and doesn't cost anything, well, it's very efficient, right? And very powerful, just like with Aspect of Baylor. So to me this is a must, and the first choice you should always get. As for the last mythic rank, Unless our cats change something, I do believe demons can actually get Mythic 10 much earlier than the other Mythics. You can go with anything you want, really. Flawless attacks is a safe choice, I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but it helps. Either Vrock or Brimorak is fine, it won't matter. As for your last Demon Lord aspect, honestly, I think the Skari is the best choice here. So, Areshka go. well, the mischance bonuses doesn't really matter since... Our pet is the one tanking for us. As far as Cabriri healing every time you kill an enemy, like I said, our pet tanks for us, so it's not like we'll be taking much damage. When it comes to Pazuzu, an extra attack, I mean, it can help, but we have so many attacks already, from attacks of opportunity and all of the free attacks we get during charge. And Sokov Benoff is only for casters, so I would go with the Skari. Being able to bypass physical damage immunity is pretty fun. The same when it comes to turning our energy damage into unholy which is mostly irresistible. When it comes to gear for your Cavalier of the Pot Demon, well, the amulet as usual, Valaxius, we truly want to maximize strength for the highest attack bonus and damage boosts. Besides that, earlier, you also have a few amulets that can increase initiative. For armor, our character actually doesn't need any armor at all, as we can simply rely on our pet's super high armor class to tank for us, and we can ride it even at level 1. But if you want, the Chainmail of Comradery can help, thanks to extra bonuses against flanked creatures, even if we already have outflank. After all, since we are a mounted character, we are always flanking the enemy. And early game, we can also go with full plates or breastplates, especially mithril ones, since we do have very high dexterity eventually, with little investment. For the clothing slot, the Wandering Command, I believe, would be the best choice for the very powerful bonus to athletics, but most importantly, the untyped boost to attacks of opportunity. And since we have very high critical range with a tripping pet, we get lots and lots of attacks of opportunity. Earlier, the Shirt of the Blazing Fighter can also help for the bonus to athletic skill checks. When it comes to belts, at first belts that enhance both strength and constitution, and after that physical perfection belts. There is actually a belt that enhances your charge, but it just reduces the enemy's armor class against ranged attacks. I'd much rather if this worked for melee. And there's also the Mangling Frenzy belt, which adds extra slashing damage on every critical hit while you are raging. The problem is, this extra damage can easily be resisted by demons, as it's applied separately. For gloves, Defensor's Gift I believe are the best here for the plus 3 bonus to damage when using two-handed weapons. But earlier on, you can also go for the Dashing Cavalier's gloves. I'm pretty sure this is either a backer or pre-order item, but anyways, they are very powerful since you acquire them as early as the first chapter of the game for free. And the extra plus 2 untyped bonus to damage rolls while mounted is perfect for any character that can ride a pet as early as level 1. When it comes to boots, I do think for this build in particular since we are fully focused on charge, the boots of Stampede are by far the best, for up to 20 extra damage when charging. But you know you can always go for 1x sacrifice as well, especially for the very high bonuses to both mobility and athletics. For the helmet slot, I have Shailili's here just for <laughs> the style, because I think it looks pretty cool. But ideally what you want is Demonic Resentment instead, as this will further increase the power of your character while raging, including Demonic Rage. Since our helmet will not grant a bonus to mental stats, this is why I go for the Broken Trickster glasses for the glasses slot. For the plus 6 to Wisdom and Charisma, mostly Wisdom because, you know, the other mental stats don't really do anything for us, but Wisdom at least can enhance your will saves, which can come in handy every now and then. For the cloak slot, I do believe the ultimate cloak for a demon character is the special version of the demon mythic cloak, the Bound of Possibility, because the effect it has of increasing your demon rage and demonic aspects by an extra 3 mythic ranks will actually work even if you are already at mythic rank 10, which is why for example I have a plus 7 
demon bonus here to my strength from aspect of Avakia. Without the cloak, it would just be plus 6. Otherwise, cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier. Also, don't forget you have the Cult of Violence cloak equipped on another party member. Since it is a plus 4 resistance cloak, even on your very own demon cavalier, until you find the demon mythic cloak, this will grant you an aura that enhances the attack and damage rolls of all your allies while raging by plus 2. With a scald, it is always in effect, and with a demon, don't forget we have the aspect of Baylor to apply rage to all our allies as well. For the rings, as usual, the Ring of Evasion, this build doesn't get exactly very high saving throws, but they are still enough. Also, the Ring of Imminent Demise for the competence boost to damage and attack rolls of two handed weapons. As far as braces, the braces of armor are more than enough if you aren't using any armor. Although, you know, as I said before, armor class is kinda useless for our character because our pet's AC is what matters, although it can help when it comes to avoiding some attacks of opportunity. But you can also go with the braces of dominance or the braces of breaching, even the bracers of abrupt onslaught early on, as you do find them in pretty much the same place you get sneak attack for free. Alright, so now all that's remaining are our weapon slots and quick slots. For your ultimate weapon, you know, the Grave Singer is still by far the best. I know I often have it in a lot of my builds now, but what can I say, it is one of the best weapons in the game, if not the best overall, because of the combination of extreme critical range with also extreme critical damage multiplier. And this will help a lot when it comes to enhancing your charge attacks. Besides that, there is also the Fabled Hero's Lance, which does add a pretty nice boost to charge damage. The problem is, you know, like I said before, you only find this super late in the game, and I still don't think it is a better choice than the Grave Singer, which you can get in specializing way earlier. For the early game, however, before you get Improved Critical into Great Axe, you can truly go with any weapon you want, although I would recommend for Chapter 1, you go with weapons that have the highest base damage to further empower your Spirited Charge ability. So ideally, great swords, but you know you can also go with Glaives and Bardishes, there's plenty of Glaives in the early game. For Chapter 2, the Wide Sweep Glaiving Sight is without a doubt the best choice. As for Chapter 3 on Mars, Grave Singer. When it comes to your quick slots, the Lucky Dice can provide nice bonuses, an Extend Meta Magic Rod, mostly to extend some of your powerful melee damage enhancing demon spells like Life Bane. The Greater Quicken Meta Magic Rod is only here in case you want to cast some demon spells as swift actions, since you can still attack and charge at the same time. For a good example, we have Telekinetic Burst and Telekinetic Strike, as they do up to 20d6 untyped damage without spell resistance, so even if you aren't a caster, you can still use this for some extra damage if you want. The Dragon Familiar Jarsigax is only here in case you go with Aspect of the Scar, which you turn the energy damage into Unholy. As for the last slot, as usual, the Signet of House Vespertilio to increase any skill of choice. I'd personally go with Mobility, just for the synergy with the Mounted Combat feat. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my second racial archetype build, the Cavalier of the Paw, Demon Halfling. If you found this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member for some exclusive and neat content. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, hopefully now with the soon-to-be-released Enhanced Edition for Wrath of the Righteous.